Hallelujah. Happy Mother's Day, everybody. Belong to God. Hallelujah. That's my mom. She was a hundred years old. Hallelujah. Everybody, this is your girl right here on No Longer Bound, and we are here. This is Mother's Day. I know you are out there celebrating. Yes, you are, and that's a good thing. Hallelujah. I'm so glad for you. I pray that you're having the time of your life today. Yes, All right. Yes, enjoy. Enjoy. Because we serve a God that opened doors. We serve a God, and he's opening doors today. He's opening doors for some mothers. We want to bless you. Guys, this is your girl, No Longer Bound, and this is my album, and you know that you can get it on Amazon. You can get it on, you can listen to it on Spotify. You can listen to it on iTunes. It's all over the place, SoundCloud. God bless you for your support and all that you are doing. You can... Um, subscribe simply by hitting my picture which is at the left hand corner of the video and once you press that it'll take you to the subscription page go ahead and subscribe like and share be a blessing in the name of Jesus amen hallelujah well we're gonna be talking today normally we would be doing our uh, teaching on the Holy Spirit today but what we're going to do today is we're going to give a tribute to praying mothers, praying mothers. My mom was a praying mother. Hallelujah, Jesus. So I, I, I found an article I really want to share with you about being a praying mother. I, I pray that I have a word of encouragement for you whenever you hear this video. Whatever time you hear it, I pray that it will encourage you, it will bless you to keep on keeping on. Let's pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you today. We bless you today. We magnify you today. We give you all the praise, all the honor, all the glory that is due your name. We thank you, Lord God, for mothers. Oh, hallelujah. We thank you for mothers. We thank you for godmothers. We thank you for grandmothers. We thank you for mothers, just mothers, however way they come. Some come in the form of aunts. Some in, come in the form of big sisters. Some come in the form however they come. We thank you for them. And a special thank you for our biological mothers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. All right, guys. All right. All right. So, what we have here today, is, the question is asked, why are so many children unsaved? And, and we named this for praying moms because what praying moms do is they pray for their children. That's what my mother did. She, she was... <laughs> Listen, I'm a living testimony. She was on her knees. She would be praying for this girl here. She was praying for her daughter. 
Yes, she prayed for each and every one of her children. And she prayed for her grands and she prayed for other people's children. She would be praying when I would be out in the world doing whatever it was that I was doing. But she would be praying. There is nothing like, there is nothing, no one more powerful than a praying mother. Oh, hallelujah. So let's let's just read a little bit. Let's see what's going on here. Because a praying mom wants her children to be saved. She's like saying, Lord, I'm saved and I, I brought them up in the right way. And I, I tried to teach them all that I knew to do. And, and, and I taught them about you, about the word of God. The Bible says train up a child in the way that you would have them to go. When they are old, mature, they will not depart from it. Lord, my children, Lord, my children, my children. And we know this is a day and time right now where a lot of parents are losing their children. Amen. And and that's a sad thing. And we send all our condolences to all mothers that are heartbroken today. There are many, many mothers that are heartbroken today because they, are, they have just lost their child and all of the stuff that's going on. We are aware of that. And mom, we are praying for you. We are praying for you. But as the, this, this, the question is asked, why are so many children unsaved? And I want to just read something to you. You know I like to, to read good books and, and we learn from them and I like to discuss them and, and go through what is happening here uh, pertaining to what we're dealing with. Amen? So it says here, it is, you, it, it is usually hard and painful to have children who are unsaved. I'm going to say that again. It is usually hard and painful to have children who are unsaved. It says the thought that your children might go, as Christians we believe in heaven and hell, that your children might go to hell if they don't repent and give their life to Jesus will constantly plague you. And you love them too much and wouldn't want them or wouldn't want that to be the case. Mothers, you're praying, oh God, my children, my children. Their lifestyle is very different from yours. Spiritual things like prayer, study of the word, attending church services and doing those things that are in consonance with the word of God does not interest them. I can remember those days. You have preached to them, prayed for their salvation, and even asked people to pray and to speak to them, but it seems nothing is working. They are still the way they were. Mm. No, 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 no changes have taken place. As a result, you often get discouraged. When praying for their salvation, and begin to wonder if your prayers will ever be answered. Well, I've got good news for you, praying mom, <laughs> praying grandmama, praying auntie, praying mom. Your prayers for the salvation of your children can be answered. Hallelujah. I am a product of a praying mom. Yes, Lord. Why are my children still unsaved, you say? This is a very important question. Now, you must understand that truly Jesus had already paid the price for everyone's salvation. But there are forces. Please get this, moms, when you're praying. There are, there are forces, a sign from the kingdom of darkness and deployed to individuals to keep them from receiving the gospel and be saved. We see this fact from the scriptures. This is the word of God. God says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, 
The God of this world, meaning the devil, has blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the gospel, of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Now let's talk. It says the God of this world is the devil. He works with unclean spirits to blind the minds of people, to keep them from believing and surrendering their lives to Jesus. What you must understand in order to win this war, and we will win, and we do win, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a product of prayer. For salvation of your loved ones is this. There is nothing wrong with your unsaved loved ones. Hallelujah. Or any other unsaved person except the devil, the enemy, that evil force, that evil spirit. That's it. Once you realize it's the devil, not your loved ones, it's not them, it's the spirit behind them. Who's the real problem? Your first prayer step becomes clear and that is spiritual warfare to get the devil out of your loved one's life and mine this, oh my god my god my god I, I got to show you a picture again y'all i gotta show it to you one more time and maybe maybe i'll show it to you again i don't know this is a picture of my praying mother of my praying mom. She was 100 years old right there. She died at 101. Mom, I love you. I love you, Mom. Thank you for all that you've done. Thank you for all your prayers. Thank you for praying for me. Thank you for praying for your child who was wayward and lost out in the world <laughs> somewhere. Thank you, Mom. Thank you. God bless you, Pastor. Now, thank you. It says, it says here, I, I want to go back to that because sometimes... We can think it's our children that are going to well, What is wrong with my child? What is wrong with my Lord? Have mercy. I keep praying and praying. And, uh, but I, listen here. Listen to what he says here because the Bible says it's the devil that blinded their eyes. So it says here, once you realize it's the devil, it's the enemy, not your loved one. It is not your child. Who's the real problem? Your first prayer step becomes clear. That is spiritual warfare. Hallelujah. To get the devil out of your loved one's life and mine. Let's go on. This implies that if you must pray for salvation of your loved ones, you need to learn how to pray the right way and how to contend with the forces of darkness, keeping them from accepting Jesus Christ as their Lord and their Savior and be saved. To make it clear, this is what Jesus said. I'm reading Matthew chapter 12, verse 29. He says, how can one enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods except first he bind the strong man. All right? Now, praying moms, you're the strong man. I know you're not a man, but in God, we don't worry about male or female. We're all one in him. That's our earthly suit is a male-female thing. But, but we are, we, you are the strong person. You are the strong one. You're the high priest in that home, praying mom, praying grandma. That, that you might be the only safe one there. Today I'm talking about praying moms, praying grandmoms. I'm talking about praying aunties. I'm talking about somebody taking this, they going to their knees and taking a force for my children. You won't have my children. Oh, hallelujah. Get your hands off. Oh, gosh. Mm, thank God for my mother. Hallelujah. So it says here, okay, remember 2 Chronicles, Chronicle, oh, sorry, 2 Corinthians 4.4 4 says, and we read that at the beginning, the God of this world, the devil, 
hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. He says, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. He does not want us to be saved. He does not want that. Listen, I was out there, people. If he could have taken my life, he would have. People that know me from years ago, if he could have taken my life, he would have. But I had a praying mom. Oh, Jesus, hallelujah. I had a praying mom. And she was on her knees for her baby girl. She was on her knees for all of her children. But she said, Lord, God, hallelujah. Oh, I wish, I wish somebody knew what I was talking about. You got yourself a, you got a praying mom. You got yourself a praying grandma. You got yourself a, you got something powerful. You got, listen, that's a powerful force because they are praying with the power of God and they are covering their children. They are covering them out there. You wonder some, I'm, I'm on a tangent now. I'm off a little bit. You wonder sometimes why the bullet missed me. Oh my God. My, you come home. I was, all I got to say is, I don't understand the person right next to me. They, they got shot or it, it passed by me or it just hit my arm, or my leg. I'm still alive. Or I, I don't know how I got out of the car. I, just, I don't understand. It rolled over and over and over. My life should have been taken. I don't know. You got, hey, you got a praying mom or you got a praying grandma. There's somebody, hallelujah, Jesus, that is covering you. Oh, my God, under the mighty prayers of God. They're praying for your life. They're praying for your salvation. They're saying, no, this child is going to work for the Lord. This child is going to work in the kingdom. I don't know how. Not worried about that. Not worried about you being a preacher. Not worried about you being a singer. Not worried about you being a deacon. Not worried about you being an usher. Not all of those are part of the body of Christ. We ain't worried about that. But that mom is saying, my child will live and work for the Lord to build up the kingdom of God. No, devil, you will not have my child. Hallelujah. Praying moms, I know what I'm talking about. I'm a living testimony. Okay, let's go on. It says here, combining 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, and what we just read, Matthew chapter 12, 29, it says, you will begin to see and understand that the goods of the strong man stored in his strong room is the mind of people. Whoa. Did you get that? We're not talking about somebody got, you're not, talk, not talking about in your house, you're going to come and get your TV. We're talking about the mind. The enemy is after your mind. That's what he wants. My mother used to say, God bless her heart. My mom only had a third grade education. <laughs> Later, she went back to school to get a certificate of learning. She only had a third grade education when she was raising us. But she would say some words of wisdom because she was taught the Bible and she would seek God for wisdom and understanding. She would say this to us. When somebody or something gets your mind, it has you. Oh, my God. Did you get it? When somebody or something gets your mind, it has you. You you ever seen folks, they look completely healthy, look like they're all together. And then they start to talk and you find out that their mind is not there. Nothing wrong with them physically, you would see. But their mind is gone. The, the, their mind is not there. We even see it in the disease with dementia. We see it in the disease with Alzheimer's. The mind. The body can be strong and healthy. But if something, someone gets your mind, they got you. Hallelujah. So it says here, the strong man stored in his strong room, which is the mind of people, so to get the mind and heart of people to receive salvation of Jesus and be saved, you must first of all bind the strong man and render him completely powerless. Once 
the strong man is bound. You can now plunder his goods. Now you can have your way. If, if, if somebody has gotten your mind, they can have their way with you now. They, 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 they can plunder your goods. They can plunder your mind. and They can plunder the hearts of your, the, the minds and hearts of your loved ones because, because their mind, is, is, he's gotten it now. But oh, we stand in the force and the power in the name of Jesus. We stand under the blood of God. The blood that never loses its power. Hallelujah, Jesus. All for praying moms. Listen, my mom didn't have to be in the nightclub with me. My mom didn't have to be wherever I was running around. And I was miles and miles away from her. She was in one city and I was in the other. She didn't have to be there. Glory be to God. But she was a praying mom. And there is no limit for prayer. You can't limit prayer. You can't limit the Holy Spirit. Listen, get over to the, we'll, we'll be back Sunday. We'll be back Sunday on our teaching of the Holy Spirit. Amen. There's, you can't, you can't contain the Holy Spirit. The, the Bible says the Holy Spirit is like the wind. It's like the breath of God. You don't know where it comes and where it goes. You can't contain it. So there's no such thing as I li I'm, I'm living, well, I'm over here in, whatever, New York City now, and mom is in somewhere else. But the prayers that she's praying, oh, you can't stop it with distance. My word to you today, to all moms, to all grandmoms, to all aunties, to all whomever, I know it looks bad right now. You ain't got to tell me every day I read about the killings. Every day I read about what's going on. But I'm going to challenge you again. Go back to the old landmark. Start speaking the word over your children. Start praying over your children. Start pleading, not plead, but applying the blood over your children by faith. Cover them. Cover them up. Don't just send them off to school. Cover them before they leave home. Hallelujah. Then you're covering them all day long. And you're covering them when they get home. You're covering them when they sleep. You say, oh, wait a minute. Now, you're trying to tell me I'm going to spend all my time just praying over my children. Yes. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. I, I We read in the Old Testament. We're not going to go there because I want to finish this. In the Old Testament, it said, Job prayed for his children. And they were adults. And he said he prayed for them just in case they sinned. Not that they had, but just in case. He wanted to cover them just in case. Do you know my mother lived to be 101? But you know as long as she, she was still praying for me. She was still praying for her grandkids. She was still praying for us. We're adults. But she never stopped praying. Oh, my God. This is so powerful. I wish it could go on be long beyond Mother's Day. But I can't add on another study right now because we're, we're tied up unless the Lord tells us to put it in somehow. Oh, glory be to God. So it says here, the sin... Uh, the send uh, someone principle, the send someone principle. Let's move forward and go back. Hold on, I think we're going to stop there, but let's go back and see. Yeah, I think we might pick it up. We're just going to pray right now for mothers. I just want to spend this time now to just pray for mothers and uh and let you know uh, to don't ever get discouraged. Amen. I want to see what this principle says here. It says, the sin someone principle. It says, many of us who are believers have at several times or one time or the other attempted to preach the gospel to a loved one and hit a brick wall doing just that. It says in most cases, they don't take us seriously. That's a big thing right there. Sometimes, you know, mom, you're praying and don't stop praying. 
but then the, the your, your kids are looking, you know, at everybody around you, the household, everybody else in there, and they might think, oh, that's just mom and they're praying. She's always praying, but they just don't know what God is doing. Yeah, you know, some every, every time they every time they, they we go somewhere, mom calls us and she want to pray over us. Every time we want to leave out in the morning, we to go to school, she want to pray over us. We're gonna be all right. Ah. Thank you, Mom. Don't you dare stop. Don't you dare stop. It says there is this attitude of contempt and disregard we get from them. This is not serious. Just like Jesus was not honored in his hometown, our loved ones seem not to take us seriously. That is true. You know, you're a pastor. I'm not a pastor. I'm a minister. But, you know, it, you, you got your own family. Don't have to be your children. It can be just your own loved ones, your family. And they're going like, you are what? You're a minister. You're a pastor. You're what? Ha, I've been knowing you all your life. We grew up together. What you talk about? You're a pastor. What you talk about? You, you're a minister. Really? Okay. I guess if you want, I'm one too. Ha, you know, they don't take you seriously. Hallelujah. God bless you, Cheryl. They don't take you seriously. Yeah, amen. But it says here, that Jesus was not welcome in his own home. Amen? It says, just like Jesus was not honored in his hometown, our loved ones seem not to take us seriously. He said, over the years, we see them drifting farther away from salvation and deeper into sin or the worldly lifestyle. It's big right now. It's big right now, parents. Oh, my God. They're influenced from the north, south, east, and west. The enemy is not holding back now. He's pouring everything out at our children. He says, we have employed fear and scarce tactics about hellfire and, con and condemnation of uh, heart, uh, target shootings, and always, and always, in all cases, this worsened the situation. We read that back again. I want to get some understanding. So we have employed fear and scare tactics about hellfire. Yeah, um, I grew up on the hellfire teaching as a kid. There were preachers who would teach, you know, you, you, you're damned to the hell if you don't accept Jesus. Well, you know something? Maybe the way that they brought it across might not have, you know, they had to go with what they know. Maybe they shouted it a little loudly and maybe they, you know, stomped their, their pounded their fists or, you know, you're doomed to hell, you know, type of thing. But I want to tell you something. We took notice and we went to the word. You are, the, 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 those sermons did one or two things for us. They made us either come to the Lord or they made us run away. They, they made us either feel, oh, I got I to gotta make a change in my life or no, this is not for me. I'm going to flee. They didn't sugarcoat it and make it so um, comfortable that you really don't need to obey the word of God. You really don't need to go by his guidelines. You just can do whatever you want and it's okay. Well, that's really not what Jesus did. He'll give, you, give us wisdom on how to share it, of course. The Bible says, by loving kindness have I drawn thee, yes. But love also, listen to me carefully, love will tell you the truth. Love will tell you the truth. I've been accused of being hard. Don't mean to be hard. But I know that if I lie to you, I'm going to be held accountable and I got to give an account to God and I'm also held accountable for your life. If I'm telling you compromise scriptures and I'm changing things to fit you and your no, 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 that, that can't be, that can't be. You have to go by what the Holy Spirit is telling you to do and you speak it the way that he tells you to speak it. And you leave the rest of it up to God. All right, we got to come to a close. My God. So it says here, we must understand 
that there is nowhere it is written in the Bible that our loved ones would be saved by us. Ooh, God. There is nowhere. Oh, my goodness. Now, there's a scripture that says uh, with the husband and wife, and the husband, I think, is sanctified by the wife. Peter's talking about. In that, but he never said that he would be saved by the wife. Never that the children would be saved by the mom. But mom, you keep praying. God bless you, my daughter. God bless you, my niece. You keep praying. They might not come to you and say, oh, mom, I'm ready now. I'm ready to give my heart to the Lord. They might not. They might be to a preacher way down the street or it might be on television or it might be somewhere else. It does not matter. That's not our concern. Our concern is to keep praying, Lord, save my children. Lord, keep my children. Protect my children. Don't let them die without knowing you. Keep praying. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord, there's a scripture that says, I think it is, it's in, it, I'm not sure now, you can look it up, but you'll know it when I, when I speak it, where it says, um, one plant, and then it says one water, and then it says God gives the increase. So, mom, your prayers, you're praying that a word would be planted in my child. Lord, you're praying that somebody would come and water that word in my child. And Lord, you're praying that, Father God, you'd bring them into the fold. Amen. Hallelujah. So, so gosh, we got to come to a close. I'm sorry. So it says, we must understand that there is nowhere it is written in the Bible that our loved ones would be saved by us. So the question is, what can we do and how do we pray to get them saved? The answer is in the send someone. Send someone principle. Found in the scriptures, God bless you, Taylor. I have narrowed it down to send someone. I like that. I like that, y'all. The send someone principle involved the art of intercession. It is the next step after spiritual warfare described above. Oh, God. Read that scripture, if you will, in uh, Matthew chapter 9, verse 37 and 38. The sin someone principle. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What about that? The, the sin someone principle? I am going to... This was my mom. Singing called her 101st birthday, her favorite song. Hallelujah. Soul and body belong to God. She was 100 years old right there, being interviewed by the Democrat and Chronicle. They wanted to know, Mother, give us some wisdom. How did you live so long? What did you do? I trusted God. I trusted and prayed and, unto the Lord. Amen. Mom, grandmoms, we are praying today that your children, your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren, whoever is surrounded by you, that their soul and body will belong to God, that their mind will belong to God, that their whole body will belong to God. Go back and listen to this tape, because if you don't, you'll get a little bit discouraged. You say, Lord, it doesn't look like they're changing. We gave your word for that. Don't you worry about that. You stay on your knees. You stay before the Father, and you make sure that you pray for their minds. Because my mom said, if somebody gets your mind, they got you. 
You don't want the enemy to, to bind them, to take their mind. Amen. Hallelujah. Pray that their mind will stay strong in the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Oh, I tell you, I am just, this is awesome. So blessed today. So blessed today. Pray for their mind. Pray for their mind. Pray for their mind. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to go now. You are the God that opened doors. You are the God. Father, for all the unsaved, Hey, Shadabakasa, to all the unsaved. I pray that you open the door. I pray that you open their mind. I pray that you open, Lord God, the eyes of the mothers. As they're praying, they will begin to see, open their spiritual eyes. That they will begin to see you working in their children's lives. That they will begin to see you moving, oh God. That they will not get discouraged, but they will keep praying. They wouldn't give up. They don't give up. They'll stay on their knees. They'll say, oh God, I bind the hand of the enemy over my children. Oh God, I give them to you. Wherever they are, the north, south, east, and west, God, I give my children to you. Oh God, protect them, oh God. Lord, they don't even know maybe that they need protection, but God, I know that they need protection, oh God. Protect my sons in the military, oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. Protect my sons, Lord. Protect them, Lord God. Lord, the ones that are in the prisons, Lord God, they're still my sons. They're still my daughters, oh God. Protect them that they, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that you would give them, Lord, an opportunity, Lord, to get it right. God, where they wouldn't hear me, oh God, I'm praying that you would send someone. Send someone, oh God, send someone in the jails, oh God, that will bring a word that will turn my children around. Send someone to the bar, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Send someone to the crack house, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Send someone, Lord, on the street corner, God, where my son, has, uh, our daughter, has decided, Lord, that they just want to just be on the street. They don't want to send someone in the name of Jesus. God, I might not be able to go. They might not be able to hear me. They might not accept me. But my prayer, oh God, as a praying mom, as a praying grandma, as a praying aunt, as a praying sister, as a praying, Lord, I send someone in the mighty name of Jesus. I know you're the God that opened doors. You're the God that opened hearts. You open minds. Now open, Lord, my spiritual eyes that I will see that my children are cared for and protected in Jesus' name. Now for all the moms that have lost your children, we, we pray for you that God would comfort you, that he would comfort you like only he can. We can't say, many of us can't say that we know what you're going through, but we haven't been there. But Jesus knows, and I pray that he comfort you with the Holy Ghost like no one else can comfort you, and that it will give you strength to carry on. And for the remaining children that you have, maybe, that they will be covered under the blood of Jesus. We thank you, we praise you, and we bless you for opening doors and blessing these praying mothers. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. God bless you. Go and enjoy your Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to you. Oh, we love you. We'll see you right here next time. All right? Don't forget, go out and get this album. There it is. All right, Amazon.com, YouTube, Spotify, iTunes. Don't you forget to subscribe. YouTube.com forward slash Esther Peaks, and we'll see you next time. God bless you. Bye-bye. We love you.